Now, astronomers are set to reveal what they're calling a groundbreaking development. It's being presented right now at news conferences in six cities around the globe. They're all taking place at the same time. This is the result of years of work. For the first time, scientists will be unveiling a real image, not just a computer animation, of one of the most mysterious objects in the universe, a black hole. I'm joined now by Leah Albrecht from DW's Science Desk to talk about this with me more. Leah, this is such a anticipated event. How uh, significant is what we could potentially be about to, to see? It is, it is huge, really. Um, I mean, I was excited myself. <laughs> I, I dreamt about this tonight. Um, and it's, it's, it's really exciting because so far we have only seen simulations about black holes. And this is now the first image we just saw it um and so so it's it's um you know it's huge it was widely anticipated and of course we can't see the hole itself still because black holes are by definition invisible but now we have an idea about um about you know the whole construct which is um for example in the middle and at the center of our milky way and at the center of many other galaxies um and a big, big, important point in our universe, which is still not fully understood. Now, haven't scientists known for a long time what, what black holes look like? I mean, why are these images such a big deal? No, actually, scientists haven't known what, what they look like. They had just simulations, they had calculations, they had theories. Um, what they had were uh, only indirect observations so far. For example, how stars move around some gravitational really strong center, and they thought that this would be the effect of a black hole. But uh, there was, there's no real proof so far for, for the existence of a black hole. Now, this image um, is approve and it's it's really it's really huge it's big it's a big step in, in science history okay T tell me a little bit about the the, the teamwork the international uh, cooperation behind this um, obviously this is this has been a sort of a, a global science project to make uh, to make this happen what we're seeing today yeah yeah with, without teamwork it wouldn't be uh, it wouldn't be possible there are uh, in total eight telescopes so far that work together in different parts of the world um, and they're all synchronized and tied very accurately with atomic clocks uh, that only lose one second every hundred million years. So it's very accurate work done there. Um, there are telescopes in Chile and Hawaii and on the South Pole, the USA and Mexico and Spain, um, eight in total. So it's a very important scientific network um, and that works very accurately to gather all those important data. All right, Leah. OK, well, we're actually going to go live now to the press conference um, and to find out more about what these international scientists have got to reveal. So we had one the size of the distance between these telescopes, truly turning the Earth into a virtual telescope. All the sites that we used can be seen here. We have telescopes from Hawaii, to Arizona, to Mexico, to Chile, to the South Pole, and, on, and Spain. But even these, even this broad global network is not enough by itself to make an image. You can think of them as being silvered spots on a large global mirror. The key is that the Earth turns. During a night of observing, we are able to sweep out more baselines, more coverage of this virtual mirror to make our image. So on the left, you'll see the Earth turning. Every pair of telescopes provides us with one point on the center panel, which fills in the Earth-sized virtual lens. And on the right, you see the evolving image. The more and more data we get, the more we fill in this virtual mirror, the sharper our view of the black hole becomes until you wind up seeing what we have as the final image there. So we've taken advantage of a cosmic opportunity. It's remarkable when you think about it. Light that left near the event horizon, traveled all the way through intergalactic space. It hit our telescopes. The Earth just happens to be the right size. So we get resolving power so that we can see the black hole in M87, whose mass and distance let us observe it. And then the Earth turns to fill in our mirror so that we can make this image. It's, it's truly remarkable. It's almost humbling in a certain way. Now, we are four members of a large collaboration. And it is our distinct honor to be here to represent that collaboration. We are 200 members strong. We have 60 institutes. 
and we are working in over 20 countries and regions. We consider ourselves really to be explorers through international cooperation and innovation. We've exposed part of the universe that we thought was invisible to us before. It's our responsibility now to report these findings, and we're doing that today to the National Science Foundation, to our funding agencies, international and foundations, and to all people who support pioneering research, and also to the taxpayers. Nature has conspired to let us see something that we thought was invisible. This is a long sought goal for us, and we find it tremendous, and we hope that you will be inspired by it too. Thank you, and now let me introduce Dan Maroney, who's literally gone to the ends of the earth to collect some of the data that we've seen here today. Thanks, Chip. So, oh, I should advance the slide. There we go. So the heart of our measurement is, of course, the EHT array. It would have been an expensive, enormous undertaking to build a dedicated array just to do this experiment. So we didn't do that. Instead, we built an international partnership that allowed us to use submillionaire telescopes all over the world. In fact, we used basically all the submillionaire telescopes in the world to make this measurement, one that none of them could have done on their own. When you take a heterogeneous collection of telescopes and build them into one giant telescope, it presents a lot of technical challenges. And so in the years leading up to our 2017 experiment, we went telescope by telescope all over the world installing the specialized hardware we needed to do this. Uh, most of the telescopes had detectors that we could use, but almost none of them had the atomic clocks we need, and certainly none of them had the very fast data recorders that we use. Some places we had to do even more. A good example of this is the ALMA telescope in Chile. Uh, it's a 66 telescope array. It's by far our most sensitive telescope, and its sensitivity is transformational for our experiment. Um, but in order to use it, we didn't just need the basic hardware. We also needed a special piece of hardware that could sum the light from all the telescopes before we sent it to our recorders. Uh, this alone was a many-year project using an international collaboration of people from the EHT and also from the ALMA project. Another good example is the South Pole Telescope. The South Pole is a special place in our array. It's so far south that it doubles the resolution uh, of the EHT for sources it can see. But the SPT was designed to do a completely different kind of measurement. It studies the cosmic microwave background. And so its detectors are not the detectors we need. So in addition to bringing down an atomic clock and all the tens of crates of hardware that we needed, we had to build a special receiver uh, that would detect the light the way we need it detected, special optics to relay the light to it, and install it and get it to work in the uh, cold and sometimes harsh Antarctic environment. This was many years of work for uh, many of us, uh, many trips down for myself and graduate students and postdoc and other engineers in the EHT team. But at the end of it, we had a South Pole telescope that could be an EHT station. Now, getting the site. All right, now that was coverage from Washington where science scientists were announcing images, very first images of an actual black hole. I'm joined by Leah Albrecht from DW Science Desk. So Leah, we just heard some, some extraordinary things there. Obviously a large collaboration, 200 members working in 20 uh, countries. Um, one of the uh, scientists speaking called it a humbling experience, this research that's, that's happened. Um, exposing parts of the universe that we thought were invisible. Incredible stuff. Now, um, a black hole by definition should be invisible. It's black. And yet we now have these extraordinary images how was this how was this possible yeah first of all you're right it, it is invisible a black hole. you can see a black hole what we can see now and he's, he he uh, mentioned the name event horizon that's what we see it's actually if we imagine the black hole as a um, as a as a whole and and we see around it we see the swirling uh, gases and and uh, and dust for example and that's what we see actually so we see the shadow of the black hole against the backdrop of dust and gases that are um, orbiting around the black hole, about, uh, around this gravitational center that is so strong that everything uh, is drawn into it, which comes, which goes beyond the event horizon. That's actually the point of no return. And after this point, um, you don't have. You, there's only 
dark. There's only darkness and, and no return. So everything that comes in there doesn't come out again. Um, what about the what about the technology behind this? How complicated a process has it, process has it been to pull this data together and make this possible? It has been really complicated because, first of all, uh, they needed a lot, a lot of data. Imagine um, if you want to observe a black hole, for example, the black hole on, at the center of our Milky Way. Um, it's it's like observing, it's, it's like counting the individual dimples on a golf ball that is 4,000 kilometers away or else 2,500 miles. It's really far. So what they needed to count this to, to, to get those signals is uh, was a really big telescope dish. It would need the size of Earth. Of course, we can't have a dish that's the size of Earth. So that's why they simulated this um, size of a dish with different stations with different telescopes in different parts of the world, as we saw in the, in the press conference as well. Um, but still, um, there are gaps. You can't, without this big dish, you can't have all the signals that come from the black hole. Um, now, they have those, they still have those big data and they um, try to put them all together. They are this big that you can't even transmit them via internet. Just um, you know, just as, a, as an image, you need to store them on hard disks and to ship them and ship them to the supercomputer that then can analyze them and can make up the image. So it's, it's not a photo, but it's an image made up of big, huge data that was gathered so far. All right. Leah Elbrecht from DW Science Desk, thanks so much for filling us in on the part of the universe we thought was invisible, but now we can see. Pleasure.